Hey everyone, my name is Haney Malamat from the University of Maryland School of Medicine, and for today's Critical Care Pearl, I thought we'd go back to basics. It's July. There's a whole bunch of brand new doctors who are in our departments learning how to do procedures, and I thought I'd give you the top five tips for placing a central line. Now, just a disclaimer, none of these techniques have been prospectively validated in double-blind, multi-center trials. These are just some things that I picked up along the way during my training and tips I got from other people who learned how to do central lines that just make things a little bit easier, but I have no data for this pearl. And the first thing I want to discuss is something that you may have seen in your kits and it almost looks like an IV, and it's an angiocatheter. Now, when we learn how to put central lines in, we typically start out with that steel needle that we're going to try to get inside the internal jugular, femoral, or subclavian vein. But it can be very difficult to keep that hand straight, especially when you're first learning how to do procedures, and oftentimes that needle will come right out of the vein, and you don't get that flash anymore, and you have to go back into the vein and aspirate out. So I encourage you to look for this thing that I call the slider catheter. And again, that is just a needle with a plastic sheath on top, essentially just an IV. And what you're going to do here is you're going to pop into the vein, get your flash, and then advance that catheter over the needle. And now you have a long catheter that's inside that central vessel. You can put your wire in and attain vascular access. So you don't need as steady of a hand as you did when you had that steel needle. The next tip is something I learned after getting blood splashed on my face or on my scrubs one too many times. And this is what do you do with that wire after you're done with it? Kind of hangs out on the bed, flops around. Sometimes it drops on the floor and you need it again. So how are you gonna deal with this wire? Well, after you deploy that wire and you're starting to back it out of your central line, Go ahead and find that plastic deployment kit that came with it and put that wire backwards back into that container. If you don't need the central line anymore, they can take that thing, it's compartmentalized and throw it in the garbage. If you do need the wire again, then it's easier to deploy that wire one more time. So use that plastic thing that that wire came with to dispose of that wire as you see right here. The next thing is checking on your work after the central line is done. Now if you work in a place where the chest x-ray can come over immediately after you place the procedure, well then that's great. But if you work in most places, it takes a little bit of time for that x-ray to come over and confirm not only that the catheter is in place, but that there's not a pneumothorax. So being that you've probably used ultrasound to assist you with your procedure, why not use ultrasound and check lung sliding to see if you caused a pneumothorax? Additionally, if you caused a small little tiny pneumothorax, that might be missed on chest x-ray, but it won't be missed on ultrasound. So what you see here on the screen is the right lung and the left lung, and we see rib, rib, and pleural line, and notice that there's no sliding of the lung over there, versus the left side, the side contralateral to where we place the central line, and we see lots of pleural line movement here. So now you know that you've caused a pneumothorax on that side. If it doesn't look significant, this is a person you might watch, put them on 100% oxygen. And of course, if it's significant, now you know that they have a pneumothorax, and you don't have to wait for that chest x-ray to come around and confirm it. Now every year, I see trainees getting stuck with needles as they're placing central lines, and often they're diving their hands down into deep dark spaces and they grab the tip of the needle. This makes me cringe. So next time you're suturing in a central line, consider taking the paper or the plastic sheath that the needle comes out of and using it to guide the tip of the needle out so you can grab the needle in the middle of its length, not at the tip and risk puncture. So here's how it looks. We're diving into the skin. Don't grab that needle tip. Instead, drive it through and use that paper or plastic to direct it out so you can easily grab the middle of the needle, a much safer way to suture. And the final tip for placing a central line is what to do when you're all by yourself. Now, some of the kits will have these prepackaged sterile saline flushes in the kit some won't, and so you'll have to depend on someone standing at the bedside, 
putting sterile saline into your field. And if you run out of that saline, you got to wait for that person to come back and you're kind of dependent on them. Well, let me give you a trick I learned during residency where we had to do most everything on our own. And what you want to do is get saline and some tubing. And remember that these things are sterile within their containers. So you're going to open up the bag and the tubing, put it sterilely on your field, spike your bag, then hand your bag off to somebody to hang up. And now you have a continuous supply of saline that can be put on your field and you can even connect to your central line after you're done with the procedure. So use this technique to be much more self-sufficient. Well, I hope those were helpful tips to help you place central lines more safely and more efficiently. Please don't hesitate to email me if you have some tips that you think should be shared with everyone and I'll be sure to put them out there. Good luck to all the new doctors that are just starting out. And for the first years in my department, I look forward to working with you folks real soon. Thanks.